Okay, a beautiful day here in the hutongs of Beijing in a tea room. Now I'd like to introduce you to the what we call the codes of the past. Before we start, remember, Taoism is about understanding we're part of nature. The assumption about reality, we call the metaphysical idea. I call it an assumption because it's the we are a microcosm of the macrocosm. So to understand ourselves, we have to understand nature. So let's go back 3,000, possibly 5,000 years, and understand what these symbols represent for the Chinese. The only constant in the universe is change. But within that change, there is a regular rhythm of changing energy. I mean, in the day, there is midday, and there is midnight, and there is midday, and there is midnight in the year. There is summer and there is winter. There is summer and there is winter. Now let's have a look at the yin-yang symbol, the first symbol, a conceptual model to help you understand nature, help us understand ourselves and the rhythms that we're supposed to live in accordance with nature. Right. Looking at this symbol, we can see the yang, which is, you know, the tai yang is the sun, the great yang, yeah, the masculine element, the day represented by the white color, rising, as the day rises, getting up with the rising sun, doing activity of physical activity and your most important mental work early in the day. In the middle of the day, breaking for lunch and also breaking in a sense of rest, just like the animals do and the birds, right? The yin rises in the afternoon at the bottom of the diagram. The yin is full, midnight. Within that fullness, the seed of its opposite is born again, the yang. Within the one day, there is midday and midnight. Within the one year, the yang and the full top is representing the summer, and the bottom is representing the winter. We could think about the full moon, the new moon. We could think about the life cycle, microcosm within macrocosm. So this is a conceptual model and diagram that is helping us understand the natural rhythm of movement during the day, during the month, during the year, during our life. And so giving us clues of how to live in accordance with that. Now the extension of that, the second symbol of Taoism, is the five elements, or what we should call the five phases. Yeah? The five walks, the wu xiong, yeah? the five transformations. And if you look at the diagram, you'll see an ancient diagram of the five, five phases is the earth in the center. And now we don't just have summer and winter on the north and south here. We also have autumn and we have spring. We start to now understand the year in a larger cycle. We start to break down the yin and yang. It's almost like an extension on the categories of yin and yang. Yeah? We start to understand how to live in accordance with those seasons, how those energetic qualities are different. The wind in spring, the heat in summer, the dryness in autumn, the cold in winter. Yeah. And we start to categorize the world using these energetic qualities. Now the only thing I need you to get out of that at the moment is that when we look at that diagram, when we see wood, it is not wood as in as an engineer, I think analytically as wood, a fundamental building block of nature. No, it's not. It's actually a, a label for a frequency of energy or a quality of energy. Yeah. And that wood represents the color green, the season of spring, yeah, the element of wind, the direction of east, the emotion of anger, the organ of the liver, the opening of the eyes, the time between 1 and 3 a.m. in the morning. They're all what we call related qualities and functions. And they're all related to the quality of wood. Now that's difficult for us to take as a, as a conceptual model and step. But just to get an idea of thinking and patterns, I call that. Yeah. And we don't have to go into that in too much detail. But these codes of the past are very important to use in a practical sense, once you understand that, to use how to live in accordance with nature and how to find balance and how to find harmony with these greater natural forces.